the language is cut out of the suit. I think as we get older, we get lighter. We don't get heavier. That through fierce and gentle living, life burns holes in us. It makes spaces. The language in this poem is by Salvador Espriu. It is, I have given my whole life to words, chewed this dog hunger into a long meal. We are what we give our lives to. Exhilaration is within. There can no outer wine so royally intoxicate. <coughs> Dickinson, I think if you were to cut us open, what would fall out would not be our intestines and our pancreas. I think that what would fall out would be words. The words that we hold layered and packed in our bodies, emotions just one right on top of each other, the words that actually meet air in our lifetime are few compared to the unlipped and untongued words we hold inside. A secret told ceases to be a secret, Dickinson. There's a pair of copper lips and a, no, a copper teeth. I don't, I know that I am an artist that is in the category of using text, but I don't care for that word because it seems too impersonal to me. To me, words are so important. The very process of standing here in front of you tonight, which I would have done with images or without, um, I have all these things to tell you, and they're lined up in me like 757s waiting to take off. So what happens is I take a deep breath, I have that thought, I wrap that, bra that thought with air, I bring it up past my heart and my lungs, and my throat, and my teeth, and my tongue, and my lips out into the air, into your ears, and into your bodies, and onto your skin. Therefore, the deepest part of my body is going from me to you. And speaking and listening is a very intimate thing. And you know that this is not just something I'm saying to say. Because when your phone rings, and you pick it up, and it's someone that you love, or someone that you hate, but someone who's close to you, and they say, hi. Every single cell in your body knows exactly who it is in that single envelope of air. Hi. You go, oh, hi. You know, hi, Mom. You know, so anyway. And this is a close-up of a piece that I made in New Delhi. I'd lived there, as I said, for two years. Living in New Delhi was completely transformative for me. I know a little Latin. I know some French and some Spanish. I had never been to a country where I could not understand through reading or speaking or listening the language. And I, I did ultimately learn some, which I can share with you at the, afterwards. Um, but you know, something magical happened with the surface sense of language removed. It became like a melody. And back in the studio, I wanted to try to recreate this sense of melodic unintelligibility that language has. And you'll see it in my work. I always try to have a little bit of, or sometimes a lot, indecipherability, just so it's like you're walking into a room. You know, you, when you walk into a living room and there are books on the shelves, I, I don't know about you, but I feel really at home. I don't have to read them, but I know they're there. It's just the sheer presence of language is a lot. Also, this is called Dare You See a Soul at the White Heat, Then Look Within the Door. Growing up in Maine, I was used to six months of solid white on the ground. So I had always thought of white as a very cold color until I lived through two summers of the 120 degree heat mm -hmm. in New Delhi. And again, afterwards, because I want to keep this a little crisp, <coughs> I'll tell you, well, maybe I'll, well, we'll see. You ask me about sweating later. <laughs> OK. Also in India, my friends, my women friends, would paint on my hands and feet and on theirs as well designs of henna for special occasions, for weddings, for parties. So when we came back to New York, I thought, oh, this is such an interesting idea, as it represents a kind of staining of those words that we hold inside our body, and it's as if they're staining through from the inside of our body to the outside like a kind of internal tattoo. So I made a number of prints. And here is my friend. And then here she is as a print. The soul has bandaged moments, again, Dickinson.